The price of LFP batteries has dropped dramatically over the last few years, and if you have a trailer or RV like this, now is a great time to swap out the lead acid batteries for new lithium iron phosphate batteries. In this video, we'll be swapping out these two 6 volt lead acid batteries for a couple new 100 amp hour 12 volt LFP batteries from Redodo. These are their newest 100 amp hour batteries with the built in low temperature charging protection. While testing both of these new batteries before the install, I was able to pull full rated capacity from each battery. I also confirmed that the low temperature charging protection works properly on each battery so we know whenever it's below freezing, the battery will pause charging and avoid permanent damage. If you are interested in learning more about these specific batteries, check out the link in the video description. So this is my friend Rod um, and this is his trailer. So Rod, do you want to tell us a little bit about the trailer? Yeah, this is a 29 foot um, toy hauler and um, we got it earlier this year. And well, so a perfect project to upgrade the batteries. So you have a solar panel on the top, right? Yeah. A 200 watt solar yeah. panel. And he does have also a charge controller. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but why did you want to upgrade to lithium iron phosphate batteries? Oh, well, we had a couple issues. Um, the wiring was a mess behind here that they were actually going all corroded, so. Yeah, they actually left all the fuses and wiring. I'll throw a picture for you guys, but even after six months, yeah. it was all corroded. Yeah. Like not a very smart install there. Um, so that was one thing. What right. else did you want and to do? The other thing, we just wanted more battery power. Yeah, a lot more capacities. Okay, so here's a closer look at the battery box. And you can see it's just right here on the tongue. So why did you choose this specific battery box? This box, um, I was just looking for something that would, would be comfortable enough to have these two batteries because they are significantly larger than the, the other ones. And um, also to bring the electronics inside. So I found something that would work and this one turned out perfect. How did you mount it to the frame here? Because we see it's it's resting on the the A frame, but you have a bit of wood underneath. Yes, I, I created a base in the, where the original battery box actually sat inside, and I've got some through threads going all the way through to the the bottom of the box, and just mounted it that way. And uh, one thing that I thought was really cool is he added this insulation. So tell us a little bit about that. It's just R2 insulation. It's the half inch stuff that you can get at any Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever. Yeah, and I just I just cut out the pieces to make them fit right, and including the lid and. I just thought I'd keep the batteries out of the extreme weather, you know, give them a little bit of insulation. And because this is a black box, uh, just, you know, the sun is going to get it pretty warm. So it'll help with that too. So right. um, let's go ahead and just uh, talk about the actual mounting of the electronics. So on the bottom here, there's a piece of wood that has these straps that hold the batteries down. Really cool design that he came up with. So these batteries are very secure. Now, I really like what you've done on the back of the box here. It looks like you have this painted half inch OSB with the electronics mounted to it. So tell us a little bit what's going on here. Okay, so I have a 40 amp fuse right here um, and it's for the solar. And then we have a 60 amp, which is for the trailer and the rest of the lights and the fridge and stuff. These are now inside the box out of the weather before, like we were talking about earlier, these were, you know, brand new trailer and these were already corroded because they were exposed to the you know the weather and conditions so really cool that this box is big enough to include the electronics and the batteries so previously he had two six volt uh, batteries wired together in series to make a 12 volt system and so when you get these 12 volt batteries and you fit two of them in here you can actually actually double your capacity so you have two 100 amp hour batteries wired together in parallel we just have these jumpers going between the negatives and the positives so we actually get a 12 volt 200 amp hour setup and this will allow for 200 amps continuous or around uh, 2560 watts so a lot of power available through these two batteries one of the most common questions i think about these batteries is you know are they compatible with existing charging equipment in the trailer so rod you have a solar charge controller yes and you have the ability to change the battery settings on that right correct so how do you change that? Um, it was really simple. There's an app for it. So I just went in the app and I was able to choose um, LiPo batteries instead of the other four options I had. Yeah. And pretty simple. There's also a house battery charging setup for this. So when you're connected to shore power or if you're running the onboard generator, it's going to charge these batteries. So you also have to think about that. We looked up the specs for that house charger. Actually, the, the charging specs were super close to um, the charging requirements for lithium iron phosphate. And that's why they call these drop and replacement batteries because the charging profiles are so close to 
lead acid uh, AGM batteries. So uh, we shouldn't have any uh, complications with the house charging setup or with the solar uh, charging setup. So I think we're good there. Now, one of the biggest draws from these batteries is gonna be starting the onboard generator. And that's this cable right here. So I have my clamp meter on here. I wanna see how many amps it pulls. So Rod, go ahead and start it up. Let's see what happens. So when the generator kicked on, it pulled around 170 amps. It's really fast, so I tried to you know, catch that number. But because these are wired together in parallel, they're good for 200 amps continuously. And the generator is the biggest load that's gonna be pulling from these batteries. The rest of the devices inside, like the fridge, the DC fan, the LED lights, is gonna get a really, really long runtime with the upgraded capacity of these batteries. Now for a helpful tip, if you are going to be crimping new battery lugs, I'd recommend using one of these hydraulic crimpers. It makes it so much easier. And also for the smaller stuff, you can just use normal wire strippers, cutters, and a crimping tool like this. Links will be down in the video description. Okay, so we've gone ahead and put everything back together. So propane tank covers back on, propane bottles are here, and you can't really see the battery box, which is kind of a shame because it looks so good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so talking about the actual swap, of the batteries, not the battery box, because that was its own project. How easy was this to take out the lead acid and put in the lithium iron phosphate batteries? It was very easy. Um, we just had to change a few of the cables because they were corroded and garbage. But So if, it, if you didn't even have corroded cables, you could literally take the battery and just put in a new battery. So we did have to, you know, swap out some components that were a little bit damaged. But now for the battery box itself, on a difficulty of one to 10 for a DIY project, how difficult was the, you know, putting the insulation and all that stuff with the battery box? It was just time consuming. It wasn't really difficult. I would say, you know, maybe three or four, but it wasn't bad. Cool. Um, most of it was just, you know, my doing. I, I wanted the batteries to be insulated a little bit. And so put in the insulation that took some time, but it yeah. out cool. Too bad I don't have a trailer to do something like this with, so I really appreciate, Rod, uh, you letting me kind of help you with this project, especially allowing yourself to be on camera. I know it's <laughs> a little nerve-wracking to, to be on camera. Uh, if you guys have any questions about uh, swapping lead-acid batteries over to lithium iron phosphate, just throw a comment down below. We'll have all the parts, um, especially the battery box and the fuse uh, connections, wires, and all that. If you are interested, we'll have that down in the video description so you guys can check that out. But, you know, we're freezing, so we <laughs> kind of want to finish the video. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. If you like the video, please click the thumbs up button, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.